Tyler from Aspire Sports. Today's video, I'm going to give you my five wide receiver sleepers heading into the 2021 fantasy football season. Guys that you should consider drafting when it's your turn, especially later in the draft. So with that being said, let's get into the video. The first player, Jarvis Landry, who you are currently drafting at his floor. Wide receiver number 38 in fantasy football last year. He finishes wide receiver number 36 in standard scoring. Wide receiver number 33 in full point PPR. If we look at his season last year, well, prior to last season, he finishes as a top 20 wide receiver every single year since 2015 minus last season. So every year since 2015, he's a top 20 guy. You're getting him at his floor right now. Last year, if you take out three games, and I hate to say take out three games, but three games in which they played Las Vegas Raiders week eight, Houston Texans week 10, and Philadelphia Eagles week 11. In those three games, one of the games got delayed because the weather was so bad. There was 30 mile an hour winds. You had torrential downpour in two of them. In those three games, Baker Mayfield completes 36 passes combined, combined in three games. So the passing volume wasn't there for either team in those games because you couldn't throw the ball. The weather was so bad. So you take out those three games, and where does he finish on a points-per-game basis? Wide receiver number 22. Wide receiver number 22 on a points-per-game basis. Jarvis Landry is a rock-solid wide receiver number two week in and week out. Does he have the ceiling that some of these other young, sexy guys have? No. But he's an old veteran that just gets the job done. So Jarvis Landry, number one. The second wide receiver, Marvin Jones. And this is a guy who has produced throughout his career another veteran player like Jarvis Landry who just produces in fantasy football. And now he's on a team in Jacksonville, a team that's going to have to throw the ball a decent amount because they're not going to be a very good team. They're going to be better than what they were last year, but still aren't going to be very good. So a lot of negative game scripts for this team, meaning more passing attempts. Now you have him playing pretty well in this past preseason game where I don't know if he's so much a sleeper anymore, but still is being drafted as a third wide receiver off the board for Jacksonville. I believe he should be the first wide receiver taken off the board. He's going to have the highest A dot in this offense. You have him building the rapport right now with Trevor Lawrence when you have DJ Chark missing time. LaVisca Chenault is more of a gadget player. They're going to try to find a ways to get him involved in space where he's just going to be their big play threat, their guy that they're going to rely on in the short game, intermediate game. He's just going to be the alpha wide receiver in this offense. He's not the best wide receiver in the NFL, but he's been pretty good. He's more of a better wide receiver number two. But in this offense, he's going to be the wide receiver number one and see plenty of work from Trevor Lawrence. So for me, Marvin Jones, second player, going late in drafts as wide receiver number 54 currently. The third player, Corey Davis. And this is a player who hasn't quite lived up to his hype coming out of college, but last year was very good on the Tennessee Titans team where on a points per game basis, finished inside the top 25 at the position. Now he's the wide receiver number one for the New York Jets. And yes, they have Elijah Moore, who I love Elijah Moore. But Corey Davis is the wide receiver number one on this offense. So a guy that's going... As wide receiver number 51 currently in fantasy football, the first wide receiver for his team is crazy. All right, it's crazy. I get it. It's the New York Jets. A lot of people don't like to draft the Jets because they suck. This is a brand new coaching staff, a, basically a brand new regime here, a brand new team for the New York Jets. So don't confuse this New York Jets with the Adam Gase New York Jets. This New York Jets team is going to be better. They're still not going to be very good. But that's good for the passing offense because they're going to have to throw the ball a decent amount. This offense should be a lot better than what it was last year. So Corey Davis as wide receiver number 51. I see his tremendous value. Third player. The wide receiver number four. And really, he should be higher on the list. I'm just kind of going based upon their current ADP is Marquez Callaway. He should be first on this list as the sleeper that you need to be targeting. And he's not so much a sleeper right now. He's going to move up in terms of ADP, but it's only going to get higher from this point out. So if you're drafting soon, draft Marquez Callaway, and here's why. I said in a previous video, Traquan Smith. Well, right now, Traquan Smith is not the wide receiver number one in New Orleans. I did at least say it's either him or Mar Marquez Callaway. Whoever the preferred target was with these two, Marquez Callaway, for me, is the guy that appears to be the wide receiver number one. This is a team in New Orleans who I don't believe is going to be dead. Jameis Winston is going to come in and be the starting quarterback. This offense is going to be fantasy relevant. A lot of people don't think so. This team is going to be fantasy relevant. Marquez Callaway is going to be the wide receiver number one, maybe for the whole season. I really don't think we see Michael Thomas this upcoming season. And if we do, he's not going to be 100%. 
I think he just basically sits out the, this whole season and goes elsewhere in the offseason because this whole thing has been really weird with Michael Thomas and the team. But Marquez Callaway is the guy you need to be drafting in terms of Saints wide receivers. Target him in your fantasy football drafts. There's a lot of upside for this offense. So Marquez Callaway, wide receiver number four. The last player I'm going to talk about, Sterling Shepard, wide receiver number five. He's currently the longest tenured Giants player. I don't know if it's on the offense or the whole team. But he's the current longest tenured player on the offense. This is a player who throughout his career has been pretty solid when he's been healthy. It's just a matter of can he stay healthy? You also have Kenny Galladay. That's another player who's already hurt in camp. Can he stay healthy? But when Sterling Shepard plays, he produces with Daniel Jones. He has produced throughout his career. He's targeted with Daniel Jones, the most targeted wide receiver on this offense, with Daniel Jones under center. Does that continue now that you have Kenny Galladay here? Also, you have Saquon Barkley coming back. Does that continue? But for me, on a guy that's going really late that could offer you solid week-to-week -week value is Sterling Shepard, especially in your full-point PPR where he's honestly a pretty solid slot receiver, will be utilized there in this offense. So... For me, there's some other guys that you can take a shot on later in your draft. He's not a super high upside guy, but if Kenny Galladay misses extended period of time, he can easily be a wide receiver number three for those weeks that Kenny Galladay does not play. So Sterling Shepard, the last player I want to talk about, and that finishes off the order. Who are some of your fantasy wide receiver sleepers this upcoming season? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And have a great day.